Hi everybody, my name is Vincent Williams. I am myself a social equity applicant who applied for an adult use dispensary license last year and wanted to speak with you all about the process of going through a community and engagement plan and diversity plan. I uh, wanted to start off by thanking you for taking part in this process of applying for uh, cultivation, infusion, and transportation licenses. This legislation that was passed last year and came into effect in 2020 is groundbreaking for the state of Illinois and for the country and is intended to serve social equity applicants like yourselves. So I want to commend you and congratulate you again for embarking on the process and hopefully these tips and guidelines that I'm presenting to you today will be able to assist you as you're meeting the application deadline. So before getting into the community and engagement plan and diversity plan, I want to frame this by way of understanding the narrative and the story that you are going to be using as the backbone and foundation of your plans. Uh, a lot of the language that's being used throughout the other exhibits that are in this application are very, very specific and technical. However, this is a moment where you really get to share your vision, your mission, your idea, and your desire to take part in this application process on an intimate and personal level. So as I was going through the application process last year, there were three questions that I asked myself and my team, along with some other social equity applicants that I was assisting in their application process. And those three questions that we're gonna break down are, why cannabis, why Illinois, and why you? So let's start off with the first question, why cannabis? What history or interest do you have with the Illinois cannabis industry? Do you have a history that's connected to the plant? Are you someone that is a patient or someone that has served as a caregiver? What has been your exposure to cannabis before even entering into this application process? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a few moments throughout this process to speak about some uh, anecdotes that are related to some of the social equity applicants that I worked with over the past year. One of which that I worked with uh, was a woman who was seeking a dispensary license and was a uh, medical patient that was using cannabis to uh, assist her with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. As she was developing her narrative, she made sure that she found moments within her story to talk about the importance that cannabis had to her on an intimate and daily level. So it's those sorts of questions that you want to ask yourself and you want to be considering as you are developing your narrative and thinking about why it is that you're connected to cannabis. So number two, why Illinois? Um, Illinois is the 11th state that has been legalized for adult use cannabis. Um, so what does that mean to you on a personal level, being a, if you are a resident of the state? What is it that connects you on a personal level to the state? And if you as a social equity applicant are going to be working in a disproportionately impacted area, what is it about that area that you connect with? And that may be by way of the city that you're in, the neighborhood, or the, the block for which you may have been scouting to set up for your uh, respective license. And lastly, number three, why you? Now this is the most important question I've found because this is really where you want to be able to get intimate about why you as a social equity applicant are connected with this process. Really dig in and look at your qualification as a social equity applicant and see how it can tie into a narrative that you want to develop. Some options and things that you may consider are what is your residency if you reside in a disproportionately impacted area? What is the family history that connects you to this process? If you have a family member that is going to have a record that is expunged, how does that uh, history connect to you? What is it about your convictions and your passions that you have on a personal level to the plant that you want to be able to engage with as you're developing your narrative in uh, this application process? You really want to be able to ask yourself the question, why do I care? Everybody who is going about this process has something unique about themselves and their own respective niche. That may be connected to their residency, connected to employees that they have. They may have a record themselves that is going to be expunged. And this is a time where you can really flesh out how it is that you connect to uh, the qualifications of social equity. An example that I'm going to use again is uh, one of the other social equity applicants that I worked with. Uh, this woman was a political leader who focused her efforts to reforming the prison 
school to prison pipeline system and was uh, convicted to take part in this process because she had siblings that at an early age had uh, were charged with cannabis possession and were forced into the school to prison pipeline system. And from an early age, when she was in her teens, let's say, she was con convicted to make a change. And so when the opportunity became available for her to take part as a social equity applicant in the cannabis industry, she leapt at the opportunity. So the next point that I wanna make is Captivate. Don't be afraid to really open up about your passions that you have for this process. This is the time where you can really flesh out and speak about why it is that you care about this. You really want to be able to give the application readers an idea of why it is that you truly are the applicant that needs to be able to have a license and what your connection to this process is. So I'm gonna take a moment now to break down how I went about the process of developing my narrative as a social equity applicant. Um, I went about this process with my family members in uh, drafting a dispensary application that was going to be focusing our efforts to the Lawndale neighborhood of the west side of Chicago. So as I was painting the image of uh, our neighborhoods in Lawndale, I originally started with what the neighborhood used to be, how the war on drugs and adversely impacted communities uh, were targeted over the course of the 20th century, leading us to the problems that are cur currently facing the Lawndale neighborhood and other neighborhoods in the west side now, and how the cannabis industry would be able to serve as a means of opportunity and revitalization for the neighborhoods that we, my family, were connected to. So some important things to remember as you're developing the narrative and story for yourself, really understand and recognize the history of the place for which you are intending to work. If you know that the disproportionately impacted area that you're intending to work in has a history that is connected to the war on drugs, feel free to break down the context and history of its impact. Really dig in about why your area as a disproportionately impacted community has been targeted. This is a great time where you can use both testimonies and statistics to support the statements for which you're making in your narrative. If you have a direct connection in history, um, feel free to incorporate those details within your narrative. So another way to go about engaging in this process of developing your narrative is by developing an interview with either members of your application team or with members of the community for which you're intending to work with them. It really helps to get the word of mouth directly from the people that you're going to be working with and not only does it allow you to become more convincing in your argument and in your application but it allows you to get intimate and really paint the picture that you're intending to lay out for the application readers. So as you're developing your narrative you also want to make sure that you are establishing clear goals for yourself. As a social equity applicant, what are you looking to accomplish? Now, these goals that you're laying out are meant to be realistic and tangible. Everybody wants to be able to do great things for their communities and, and be able to provide a lot of opportunity, but having ambitious goals versus having realistic goals can really be the make or break about having a strong community and engagement plan and diversity plan. So don't be afraid to share those goals with the application readers, but also make sure that you're being realistic about what it is that you're intending to do. And lastly, make sure that you consider what are the active steps that you are taking as a social equity applicant who's working in uh, disproportionately impacted areas to improve the circumstances and the current situation before even engaging in the cannabis application process. Can you scroll up? Okay, we're going to stop there. Yeah. Scrolling. Ready and three, two, one. So I'm going to provide you all with an example of how your narrative may sound with an example that came from my uh, community and engagement plan. Imagine a brisk Thanksgiving night and you are traversing the west side of Chicago. The wind is biting, the streets are disheveled, and the structures you pass are vacant, gated, and boarded. 
relics of a time long past. There is light commotion in the neighborhood with pockets of people gathered together on street corners, housed by liquor stores and currency exchanges. As you turn the corner of a residential block in North Lawndale, a warm glow of light, a rousing aroma, roaring laughter, and harmonious melodies radiate from the inside of a two-story home. The door opens and a vibrant, inviting energy streams forth into the cold November air. You walk up the stoop and into the foyer to find yourself in a circle of community and love. Elders sit with youngsters recalling adages of their past, passing their insight to the next generation. Around the dinner table sits a feast of food made with a deep care and soul that can be felt in every bite. In the center of the room, drums, pianos, and guitars jam together, tap shoes groove atop a dance board, and the melodies of our songs ring out in harmonies from voices across the home. Some faces in the house are familiar, while many, including yours, are not, but are welcomed with the same affection, care, and respect. The applicant is ready to take the light that has shone from this doorway and share it beyond the house and into the blocks, neighborhoods, and communities of the west side of Chicago and across disproportionately impacted areas across the state of Illinois. It is through the vision and commitment to the west side of Chicago, a commitment that has reflected in home improvement projects, church programming, and union leadership alike, that the applicant intends to engage with community extensively through means of education, startup business development, and pilot programming with local initiatives and non-for-profit organizations. The applicant believes that data and metric-driven action coupled with creative and innovative ventures will serve both the business and the neighborhoods most effective for restoration from poverty, unemployment, and other grounds deemed for our community as disproportionately impacted. So now that you have an idea of how your narrative can flow, it's time to use that as the backbone for developing your community and engagement plan and your diversity plan. Now, a few uh, tips and insights as it relates to the community and engagement plan. While this is in the application uh, cited as something that is optional, I would encourage you strongly to consider the community and engagement plan just as important as all of the other exhibits that you're going through completing in this application process. It can only uh, assist you as you are completing it and you want to be able to give it just as much value as you would to the rest of your exhibits. Um, it's 10 pages in length and uh, by way of the language in the application it states that the applicant may demonstrate a desire to engage with its community by participating in one or more of, but not limited to, the following actions. Establishment of an incubator program designed to increase participation in the cannabis industry by persons who qualify as social equity applicants, providing financial assistance to substance abuse treatment centers, educating children and teens about the potential harms of cannabis use or other measures demonstrating a commitment to the applicant's community. Now this is the information that was provided within the application and by way of the state. However, this does not limit you to these specific provisions as you are developing your community and engagement and outreach planning. It's also important to note that your outreach does not have to be directly related to cannabis. So as you are developing your plans for outreach and engagement with your community, it's important to start off before you're getting into any ideas or plans that you really ask yourself, who and what is my community? Given that you are a social equity applicant um, that qualifies as such, how is it that you are connected to the disproportionately impacted area or areas that you're intending to operate within? This is a great time that you can start to look at some statistics and testimonies that are going to support your ideas that you're forming for your community and engagement plan. Again, this is a great opportunity that you can really share a slice of life with the application readers so that they can get an idea of where it is that you're intending to work and how it is that your efforts are going to be able to improve the circumstances for the disproportionately impacted areas. Now, once you have an idea of who your community is, it's time to start asking yourself the question of what is it that the community needs. Now, one of the most important things that you want to make sure that you're keeping at the forefront of your mind is that you are making an effort to be inclusive, not invasive. It's very common for folks that are wanting to come into disproportionately impacted areas that are wanting to 
put in what they think will be the best option for the community without giving any conversation or insight or, or developing any rapport with the folks who live there. And as a result, the engagement plans or outreach that is brought into the community is not reflective of the folks who live there. So really take the time to ask yourself, are you being conscious of what the community wants? A great example or a great uh, means of strategy that you can work with in developing those answers is by working with quality of life plans, plans that have already been established by community leaders that are looking to find improvement within their respective neighborhoods. So a great example, again, bringing it back to uh, my application process, I went through uh, understanding quality of life programs that were focused in North Lawndale with some of the um, church groups that were based in the Lawndale area and finding out how I could develop a community and engagement program that would be a collaborative effort with the quality of life plans that were already established for the neighborhood. A great way to go about developing your community and engagement plan is by tapping into your community's resources. What organizations are you connected to or what community leaders do you know that already have ideas of what they're intending to do for the community and how can you collaborate and meet with them with their intended plans? There may be the development or the desire to develop a healthcare center or programming for the arts, local grocers or community gardens. This is a great time that you can really dig in and understand what it is that is already going on in the community and how you can use your work in the cannabis industry to meet them where they're at. It's also very important to note that including letters of support can be an option for you as you are developing your community and engagement plan, but it is very important to note that they do not impact your score one way or the other. However, they will take into uh, the 10 page limit that you are allotted in this community plan. So please be cognizant of that if you intend to use them. And also note that any letters of support that you plan on using must be anonymized as with the rest of your application. The next question that you wanna be asking yourself is how do I engage in my community and engagement planning? At this time, it's a great moment to assess for yourself within your team, what are the strengths and expertise and experience that you have that can be of service for the goals that you have laid out and have been able to come to an understanding of. An example that related to my team's uh, planning was we had members of our group that were uh, in the process of developing a uh, community outreach plan for the uh, west side of, of Chicago specifically that we're going specifically in areas that were going to be based on Madison Street. This was termed as the MAD project uh, that was going to bring in um, new means of entrepreneurship, art centers, local grocers, and a handful of other opportunities that would be available for community members to engage with the community and really serve as a means of revitalizing these areas that had been disproportionately impacted over the past few years. Now, while it is beneficial for you to allocate revenue to pre-existing organizations that are currently serving the community, it's also very beneficial for you to take this time to start to get creative about how, how you can develop new means of engagement that may not be precedented. Um, is there a possibility that you can develop pilot programs with non-for-profit organizations that are based in your area for which you're operating? Is there a possibility of developing scholarship funds? Or is there a possibility of hosting events that would be able to bring in community members to engage with your organization and to become more uh, engaged with the process of cannabis? Allow this uh, as an opportunity for yourself to be creative as a team as you're working to really find ways to connect with your community member. And lastly, as I said before earlier on, make sure that all of the information that you're conveying in your community plan ties back to the story that you're wanting to tell. At the end of the day, it is most important that you are able to keep this as personalized as possible. You may want to reinforce your intentions and your vision statement more than once throughout your community plan, but so long as you're able to make it clear to the reader what your intentions are, the better it is going to serve you as you are going through the application process. You really want to be able to ask yourself, how am I on a 
personal level engaged as a social equity applicant who wants to engage with my community? And how does your organization fit into the larger picture that you have for your community goals? So now we're gonna take a transition into the development of your diversity plan. Now it's important to note that with your diversity plan, you are only allotted 2,500 words. So it's at this time that you wanna make sure that the information that you're conveying is direct, concise, and intentional. Um, the definition that came from the act about the diversity plan is develop a diversity plan that establishes a goal of diversity in ownership, management, employment, and contracting to ensure that diverse participants and groups are afforded equality and of opportunity. Now, as I was drafting my diversity plan, I made sure that I was thinking in my head not just about diversity, but also about inclusivity. I believe personally that both of these words go hand in hand, and as you're developing a diversity plan, it's important that you make your intentions clear toward having an active stance toward diversity and inclusion. Um, some questions that you want to be able to ask yourself are, what plans toward diversity and inclusion are you prepared to implement with your organization? And is your organization prepared to create equitable employment opportunities for all people, regardless of age, race, gender identity, ability, or sexual orientation? And if so, how can this process be traced and tracked? Um, I strongly suggest collecting and analyzing applicant flow data so that you can analyze diversity dashboards and have scorecards that are able to uh, mark the performance analysis of your workforce that will be able to inform leadership of any diversity trends and where you all as an organization would want to make changes or alterations to your process in the future. Another great option to think about as you're diversifying your organization is considering members of your community that you may want to provide employment to. You may also consider employing folks who are going to be able to have their records expunged to continue to diversify your workforce. Really look into your communities and then give yourself the permission to be able to look beyond. Allow yourself to really find ways to include as many folks into your organization as possible so that you can make sure that you are providing opportunities and access to as many folks as you can. A big thing to remember as you are developing community and... Mm. <laughs> Wrong guy. A great thing... I'm, mm. A very important thing to remember as you're developing your diversity plan is to not only say what it is that you're intending to do, but be prepared to act on it. A lot of the time we get caught up into diversity, inclusion, equity, and buzzwords like that without really giving them the full weight of what they mean. As you're drafting this section of your application, be prepared to implement this information if you are going to be acquiring the application and moving forward into the licensing. It's important to have goals that are going to support your plan and to really have tangible means of action from top to bottom. And making sure that you're answering the full question and prompt that's being uh, presented in the application. Asking yourself how you are going to be having diversity in ownership, management, employment, and contracting. Now, a great way to go about being able to mark these changes or these plans is developing trackable and data-driven goals. You want to be able to ask yourself what types of things can you do to monitor, record, or scale the goals that you're laying out to ensure that progress is actually taking place. A great option for this is to publish and review internal reports on your workplace demographics to analyze the strengths and weaknesses that you have and where you may want to implement some changes. And it's important to check this on a regular basis, and that will be relative to every group. You may check it annually, biannually, weekly, biweekly, monthly, by one, monthly, what have you. It's also important to consider different types of training practices as they relate to diversity and inclusion to make sure that your plan is covered from top to bottom. Different options may include webcasts, webinars, uh, in-person training, uh, inclusion quotient training, or implicit bias awareness training. And most importantly, out of all of this as you're developing your diversity plan, is making sure that you have grounds for self-accountability. And goals will be able to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable. And as with your community and engagement plan, you want to make sure that all of the information that you're laying out can tie back to your vision and to your story and narrative. 
in the same way with your community and engagement plan that you were sprinkling in different pieces of your story and your connection to this process, feel free to find moments where within the 2,500 words you can successfully bring in that same uh, feeling that you are connected. Feel free to find moments where you can really tie in your vision into the diversity and inclusion planning. Consider framing the plan with an introduction and or a conclusion that relates back to your narrative. Uh, this is also a great time, much like with your community and engagement plan, to incorporate statistics and testimonies as they relate to diversity within your organization and within your goals and intentions. So I want to close by leaving you all with some last thoughts and some housekeeping tips as you're going through the completion of this section of the application process, but also as you're going through the other exhibits. So first off, make sure that you while you are being personal, you are also making sure that you are having some anonymity. Now, it may feel like this is counterintuitive as you're saying these two things, be personable but also be impersonal, but there is a way to go about doing it. Always make sure that as you're referencing yourself in this process, you are referring to yourself as either the applicant, the company, the organization, the entity, or something that is third person. You can reference specific locations that you're intending to work within. However, when it comes to program names or community leaders, you want to be able to have that same level of anonymity. However, you can also refer to what the programs focus in or what those community leaders uh, operate within so that you can still convey the intention around what it is that you're wanting to convey without having to put too many names into it. And last but not least, edit edit, edit. It is so important that you review your work as you are working and make sure that you have more than one person that's doing those edits. You want to make sure that you have folks that are assessing grammatical errors, making sure that you are remaining in a consistent voice, and making sure that your intentions are being clearly articulated through the language that you're using throughout the application. You also want to make sure that the narrative that you have been working to develop that has been presented in your community and engagement plan and diversity plan is clear and brought out as much as possible. And if possible, sprinkle in within the other exhibits different sections where you can convey the same sentiment that you have been able to lay out within these two plans. I want to thank you all so much again for viewing the community and engagement plan and diversity plan tips and guidelines that I've laid out today. Um, I want to also stress the importance of understanding that you all taking the steps to apply for licenses is monumental for the state and for the country. The Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act was written for and by social equity qualifying applicants like yourselves and it is our job to make sure that it serves the intended purpose. It's important to think in this whole process that we are working long term and being able to establish opportunities and access for folks that will be entering into the next phases of this. Don't forget that this process is ever-changing and the best way to stay vigilant is to be listening, engaged, and responsive to updates and changes that will be happening and to remain flexible as you are going through your application process. I wish you all the best of luck and I look forward to seeing the results that will be coming out later on this year. Thank you. Thank you to the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity for the opportunity to deliver this assistance to social equity applicants in Illinois. This production was created for us, by us, wholly by small, independent, and local women-owned and minority-owned businesses and organizations.